Right, so the peg's really good now. Shallowed up a couple of inches, they've come really shallow, they're having the bait. And it shouldn't take as long for a bite, in all honesty, now. Oh, there we go. Oh, really good fish, pulling really hard. Just keeping the pressure on. It's determined to get in them lilies, but just keep a steady pressure and he's out. And then quickly back. And there we are, another carp. Well, morning everyone, we're here at Rookery Waters today. I've been asked to talk you through some snag fishing. Now, we're on Magpie Lake today. It's absolutely, we're sat right in some lily beds, the snaggiest peg I know. I'm just gonna give you some hints and tips for the best ways to approach these pegs. All venues have them. They're absolutely full of fish. It's just a bit harder work to get them in. It's not about pulling their heads off. I'm just gonna show you the few techniques that, and the, some tips to help us get the most out of these pegs. We're always going to hook lots, it's just about getting the balance in our favour. Let's get straight to the peg and uh, catch some fish. Right, so we're, we're now here at the peg. Um, for people that know this venue, it's peg 36 on Magpie, and an absolute snag pit. It's full of fish as well, though, like these pegs always are. It's just, just somewhere they're always gonna sit around all the cover. Now, this bed of lilies from, from five meters, there's, there's not a lot of options here. The first thing on, on these pegs is where we're gonna approach the fish. Now, with, for me, there's two options here. We've either got shallow against the lily pads, or down the edges. The edges are all snaggy as well and deep. I'll see a lot of people on these sort of pegs set up rigs for fishing on the bottom by the pads. It's just a no-go personally. You've got a lot of line in the water as soon as you could fish. Before you've even had the bite it's in the pads and it's just asking to lose some kit. So shallow where we've got a chance to get them straight away or down the edge where we're as far away from the pads as we can. Um, this venue responds to natural baits, so against the pads we're just going to fish casters, just throw casters, really, really simple. Um, and down the edge we're just going to throw some meat because it's really deep, there's no need for, for putting lots of bait in down there. Um, you want to be as tight to the cover as you can, especially early on in the session. As the day goes on they will, and they're wanting to feed more, they are going to drift out, but i definitely start close to the cover. It's all just having your wits about you, the right tackle. Um, and you should land plenty of the fishy hook. Right, so one of the most important things with this sort of swim is obviously going to be your tackle choices. There's no, no point in messing around. We're not wanting to rip the fish's heads off, but we've got to be sensible and we've got to land a few of the fish. Um, for shallow fishing, I've set up two rigs, both on power kits. Both rigs are 18 to 20 slick, the red. We do do a heavier, but you will find if you fish really heavy, you, you're going to pull out of a few where you're trying to pull them. It's, it's all about getting the right balance between getting them in and, and pulling too hard. This is the perfect sort of compromise I've found. Um, Rig-wise, really durable. We don't want lots of things catching the, to be able to catch on the lilies if a fish does go in there, which there are going to be an odd one during the day that you're not going to stop. It's, it's the nature of these sort of pegs. Line-wise, nice, strong, 023. Uh, power micron down to an 020 hook length it's just an inline dibber a small little inline dibber the line can't there's no eye to get caught in the re lilies as it goes through um, just a really short two or three inch hook length depending on how deep i'm fishing of 020 and then it's an mxc4 of 14 it's slightly larger than i'd use for casters normally i'd normally use a 16 but again it's just balancing the rig i don't want to be pulling out that slightly bigger hook they're not going to be hook shy sat in those lilies anyway. Um, 
and just one of our large bands with a caster in it. Shotting wise, couldn't be any more simpler in all honesty. Normally with these floats that have sort of three number 11 shot, it's just more things to get caught. So it's simply one number nine. It's, it couldn't be any simpler. You could fish with no shot down, but what you find when there's a lot of fish knocking around in the lilies, you want a little bit of stability down the line to save the, save the light caster blowing around. That's asking to foul look fish. And again, if you start foul looking them, you are gonna lose them in these sort of pegs. Simply got one rig, they're both with short lines. I wanna be in direct contact as soon as I could fish. I don't want lots of line above my float. Sort of four inches of line. This one's set at 10 inches deep. And then I've got another identical one set at 18 inches, just if they go that bit deeper during the day. Which you, on these sort of pegs, you'll often find you get a few shallow early that are mooching around in the lilies. Then they'll sort of sit a bit lower once a few have been caught. And as the day goes on, you'll have some really good spells, really shallow as they really start to feed. Finally, just going on to the margin. Again, we're not fishing right against the snags, but the fish can soon get out there. This is uh, the 20 to 22. We're going to have a big hook on here for fishing big baits. We're down the edge. Big, heavy. It's just exactly the same line and hook length, 023, 020. Big, heavy, half gram float because it is three foot deep. Strong of number eight, um, and it's a size 12 MXC2. Again, a really heavy hook. We've, we're in control of them here. We've just got to be careful, play them straight round, avoid them getting in them lilies. Um, dead, dead simple. We're just going to throw a little bit of meat down there. And let's say it, these fish, pegs fish themselves. You've just got to be sensible with how you do it. Um, pole wise, there's only one pole for this job, MTX margin. I wouldn't want to risk breaking a strong pole. You are going to be pulling quite hard to get some of these out. Um, and it is, like I say, really, really simple approach. These pegs fish themselves. Let's get fishing and show you how to catch them. going to start by uh, I'm going to start by feeding I'm going to be it's almost raining casters in it's a constant fall I shouldn't have to do this for long it's just just to try and draw a few fish out with the noise noise of the bait going in I certainly wouldn't want to be feeding like that all day it's there's a few rudd and roach in here it's also just going to feed them off we want them carp to be there in the peg then hopefully the ideal situation once there's a few there they they mill around and they won't go far. And it's it, the perfect situation is just going to be feeding before we go out. So we're completely 100% focused on that float. It's just about quick reaction. As soon as we hook one, the pole wants to be around this way. Say so not, not trying to pull their head off, just showing them who's boss. Um, getting the upper hand. Once you've got their head turned, you're normally all right. Um, I'll show you, we'll have the pole angled right round when we hook one, and then it's about getting back quick before they get across into the pads again. It's just about being on your toes with it. Don't be reaching around, getting drinks and grabbing your phone, doing any distractions. You need to be 100% focused on these sort of pegs. Otherwise, you're asking to give them too much of a head start and you're going to start losing fish. But there we are, there's a fish on. Just like I say, not pulling really hard, just keeping the head round. And then it's back quickly before it gets a chance to go across there. Now this is only a little carp. These ones aren't too much trouble. First fish of the day, nice F1. There are a lot of these in these pegs as well. The smaller fish do feel safe around the cover. We'll get him in the net and we'll get out there, catch another one hopefully. Right, so we've been fishing for a few minutes now. We started to catch some fish, with no carp yet. We've been, uh, been catching a few F1s. They're often the first fish on the scene. The bigger carp just sit back and sort of work out what's going on. 
And as more and more feed goes in, they think I'm not missing out here. And they start to get in on the action. And once they're there, the, 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 uh, the F1s will sort of move out the way. Yeah, we're not getting bites from the F1s now, which is, uh, whereas at the start, there was quite a few. It's The carp are just starting to push them out now. There's one. Keeping that pole right round to the side. A lot of elastic out still, look. That's perfect. We want to be playing them away from them pads there and getting the pole back behind us quickly. It's not a massive fish, but look, lots of elastic out. We can play them, play them nicely and then use the puller to get them under control. Perfect size carp, really. Sort of three pound, great size fish. You can still control them, but I hope you saw there, it's just about applying some quick and steady pressure. It's not about trying to pull them too hard because that's just going to pull hooks out and all manners of problems. Lovely fish. You'll find as the day goes on, you might have to shallow up or deepen down. It's all about being at that right depth, but the carp, once, they, once they're in the feed, they do seem to set at one depth and you shouldn't have to change about too much. They're not like F1s. Here we go, slightly better fish. As you can see, what well, I keep trying to get across, still plenty of stretch in this heavy elastic. So once we're getting them to a netting range, we can still play them properly. No risk of pulling out of them. They fight ever so hard in this lake. So a lot of, lot of them have got a bit of ghosty in them, which uh, just adds to that. Really good conditioned fish though. Um, not massive, but sort of four pound, lovely match sort of size fish, lovely common, sort of four pound, great weight builders, they're the ones we want to be catching. There we are, cracking fish. Just goes to show you the sort of fish we can still land from these snaggy pegs, just with the right gear and that, the right techniques. Right, so polar choice today. Here, the MTX margin is, we're gonna put some pressure on the pole here. I know we're not trying to pull the heads off, but we're still gonna have to pull to get them out them lilies. Um, dead, dead strong. Interchanges with all my main poles, so I'm still using my same top kits. It's not carrying two sets of kit around. It's lovely and stiff and light still. Nine meters, I can reach anywhere in this peg with that. Um, and to be honest, I use it for, a, it's not, don't just rule it as a margin pole. I use it for a lot of fishing in the summer. A lot of, lot of the big weight waters, all summer fishing is short pole and edge fishing. And I'm happy just to get this out for, for doing any of that especially on the short line where you're striking hard, fishing big baits, pellets and meat and stuff. It's absolutely awesome. And I do use this as much as my main pole in all honesty. So don't think you've got to spend a fortune to catch a lot of fish in the summer. I highly recommend this, especially if you're an owner of an MTX pole, because it all interchanges. It's just so easy.
on the edge very late in the day. Expected it to be a bit sooner, but all the fish have just seemed to hang around the, uh, the cover today. Not really been interested in feeding in any depth. Just in the shallow by the pads and shallow against any reed beds we've got. Um, but hopefully just catch a couple for the camera here late on. Again, not the big fish, I just think they're cruising about. They're not really interested today, but we've still caught absolutely tons of fish. So fantastic days fishing. There we go, and we're into another one down the edge. That's a better one. They're not really wanting to feed down there today, um, so we're going to get this one in. Good fish, but and just go through the other tactics for down the edge. Bit of shallow fishing down the edge to finish the day, I think. Really good fish, but it certainly doesn't really seem like the right tactic today. Right, so we've caught a few down the edge. It uh, definitely doesn't feel right though. There's a lot of signs of fish there, but they're not really, it's too deep. And sometimes we are just faced with pegs like this. Um, so the other option we've got, and what I wanted to show you now, it's exactly the same rig as we were fishing out shallow earlier. It's just fishing shallow in the edges. It can be absolutely deadly. And what you're aiming to do is just, just flick a few in the reeds you want a few around your float as well, but a few in the reeds and you want to be getting the carp coming up sucking for them. Um, and there is signs that this fish there, because I mean, if you've got deep water across and no mud line, just, just flicking cast in the reeds. There's a few coming round, round already. I've only just started throwing casters there. And it's just where they come sucking them off the bank can be absolutely deadly. And with them not wanting to be on the bottom, it's, I think if you've got shallow water in an edge in a perfect scenario, it'd be great, but we don't always have that dream scenario. And today they definitely want a bit of shallow water. So this is the way we would get around it. There's one just coming up behind the float now. Still making a bit of noise, but you want to be getting a few of them in the, in the grass as such, so they come sucking on it. Oh, and that was the first indication and I've missed it and I've only been feeding that a few few minutes. So here's a great big one we've just caught shallow down the edge, as I was talking about. See him come in, just sucking on the reeds and he's uh, at our caster. That can be really deadly at different times of the day. Nice big fish. Right, here you are, yeah, lovely, lovely fish shallow down the edge. I say really exciting, you can literally see them come down and eat the cast as you've been throwing in the reeds and it's, you just target the biggest one never missing the bite from him it went steaming off he didn't like that oh he did <laughs> going to be the last fish of the day. Feels like a decent one again. And 
let's get him in the net and uh, just have a quick talk through what we've learnt today. Not a bad fish to end on, I don't think. And there we have it, last one of the day. Lovely common. Got a bit of got a bit of the old ghosty in him like most fish in it. Right, so that's the end of the session. Had a fantastic day's fishing here today. First half of the day we've caught loads of fish shallow against the pads. Second half it's gone a bit funny in all honesty. I thought the edge would be the way to go hasn't we've caught a few down there but it's not been fantastic they've all wanted to be sat shallow inside the pads or under the the uh, reeds down the side so we've just been chasing them about a bit a few shallow in the edge a few slapping against the pads and a few muggers have come swimming through as well so it's all been the same principles though just just hooking them holding them away without going silly with the right tackle and just being quick and getting in control quickly so we're going to go just have go back over the key pointers of today and um, we'll do that now first of all elastic choices this is the the main one with this don't go stupidly heavy and some people have a really short length of elastic there's no need for it you're going to pull out of a lot of fish once you've got them away from the reeds because there's no no elastic to play them this 18 to 20 it's it's really stretch a strong elastic but it's plenty of stretch in it i've got it for a full top kit as long as you're in control at the start you can then play them properly around your necks you're not going to lose them once you've done the hard work all i would say with it is make sure you don't have really old elastic in there i like to keep a fresh elastic in just gives it that little bit of extra bite but as you've seen today there's still plenty of stretch in it and that is point number one. Second thing leads on from that concentrate when you're in the swim by the pads it's no good reaching around grabbing a drink picking the phone up talking to your mate whatever when that rig is in the water you've got to be as soon as that float goes under you've got to be pulling them away it, as soon as they get ahead of steam and they're in there you're fighting a losing battle by just guiding them out straight away once you've got the upper hand hold them away it's, it's like playing a fish in any other peg that is the key point when you first get the bite, just, just get the upper hand on them. Lastly, the areas you fish in your peg are massive and, and the right depths. By the pads, whatever you do, don't fish on the bottom. You're just asking to foul hook or, or simply, if it's five foot deep, they've had time, by the time the flight goes under, they're already in there. You're fighting a losing battle and it's one you're never gonna win, I'm afraid. I've learned that the hard way, like a lot of people have. Fishing shallow against the pads is the way, and you'll find the fish naturally want to sit shallow in that cover. Just a bit of bait to draw them out early on, and they're always going to be up in the water, especially on a hot day like this. Shallow is the key. If you need to fish on the bottom and shallow isn't working, get as far away from the pads as you can, like the edges. Today, it's been a day where the fish have been up in the water. Another day, they might have wanted to feed a bit deeper which is where the edge would have come into play just keep those basic rules in mind and these pegs don't need to daunt you you're going to catch a boatload of fish because there's always fish around snags right hope you've enjoyed this video if you want to see more from me and the rest of the matrix team hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button and you'll never miss another video cheers for watching